What's up guys and gals and we're back. It's almost like we were just here. It's almost like I just finished recording chapter 34 that was clearly not late and jumping right into chapter 35 of Star. Strike it rich. Let's get underway with this chapter because I just finished reading it and I like this. I actually, I, I like this chapter. This is a pretty good chapter because it's I, I didn't really make a prediction, and I didn't really go in with any predictions or expectations, and that way I was able to fully enjoy what I was reading at the time, I feel, because we start off with like, okay, so we know that Ree's got a gimmick. We know that she's probably kind of strong because she's one of Hina's, like, friends, quote-unquote, subordinates, underling people, um, but we know this is not... Uh, Natsumi uh, woman is definitely no slouch. We learned a little bit more about her that I don't believe we learned in chapter 34 that she is also part of the Issa Dragons organization for the she's the champion of the women's division of Issa Dragons. Now we won't hold that against her given Sakigake and all that crap but uh, Hina immediately brings up the fact it's like look on uh, she is overall just from the stance and everything like that she seems to be the superior fighter even to uh, one of the two girls that, of course, are my two tops, are the uh, Cena sisters, Rika and Rico. Uh, Rico being the, you know, the crazy big one and stuff like that. Now, um, basically saying that, yeah, outside of sheer strength, which Rico does definitely have in spades uh, above uh, Natsumi here, overall, she's the more well-rounded, all-rounder fighter. So she could maybe even hold a candle to me. I don't know. And we're thinking, okay, Ri is going to show up. She's going to be doing all these gimmicks crap. We don't know what went on with the arm thing. And then Boma immediately goes for a calf kick. And it smarts. It immediately swells up. And Ri's like feeling lightning bolt, like shooting through. Like, uh, holy, like, I'll keep the crazy smile on. But what the fuck was that? You know, you could tell that her voice would go up a cup. You know, when she took that, like, hmm, I'm keeping the smile on. Um, so this is where, you know, uh, both uh, Nozomi and Ichika, they're noticing this. They're like, oh, that was a swift, nice, powerful kick. You know, anyone who's made champions in a different organization has to be on a certain level. And so, boom, she goes for another calf kick. And, boom, it's doing... By the looks of it, it's the same leg again, too. Like, it hits her in the same leg twice. So that really makes her stumble and buckle. This is where she goes for now a, a quick strike, like a, a huge punch. And seemingly it gets deflected in some way. Like she doesn't seem to take the whole hit. It's like she turns her head, goes limp, something like that at the same time, like dispersing the damage. But also notices something in her fish. She's like, huh? Like Girk as in maybe something like crack, like one of her knuckles or something like that. She's not entirely sure. So then, immediately, Ree's like, oh, alright, I'm going to break you now. This should be fun. So immediately, um, Natsumi. Now, I gotta respect this to a degree, and I like what happens at the end of the chapter. Once again, see, this was different, and I, I had, as I said, it looked similar, and bad timing to have this happen around the same time as the Omega chapter's coming out. But this is actually kind of different, and I kind of like that. Well, it's definitely different. So, because Natsumi re immediately realizes, oh, you're like that. And we'll see what that, what does she mean in a little bit. And it's like, yeah, no, this ain't happening. And boom, so immediately while the two blows go down, she takes a fall. And immediately we're like, wait, what? what? And we're thinking it's still the gimmick at this point. What did she do? Like, oh, what just happened? What did she do? You know, what the fuck? You know, did she even get hit? And immediately, uh, Nozomi, thinking uh, fast on her feet, tells the referee with a mic, which, thank God they have the earbuds and the mic, call the fight. Call the fight right now so that she doesn't follow up. And it's like, there you have it. And, of course, still going under the Monica of Honoka. Honoka wins! And it ends just like that with Crash to the Floor. What the hell happened? The Crash of the Titans seems to be a one-hit knockout, you know, and sort of idea, and it's just crazy and stuff. And that's when Ryu's like, oh, I'm still nuts. That was dull. What do I do? I want to break everything. And that's when Hina, which once again is also so invested right now in the Val in uh, Valkyria, um, this, you know, this promotion that she doesn't want Ryu to screw it up either, and says, um, and she grabs a mic and immediately says, 
That girl down there is not Honoka, okay? And this distracts Re to Marquina. It's like, her name is actually, you know, Shinomona Ray, and she crashed the event to get a chance to fight me, and she makes it seem like, like a wrestling, like WWE, like, oh my god, a new challenger approaches, you know, new character, Super Smash Brothers, you know what I mean, or in this case, sisters, and it's just like, okay, so she's making it seem like, okay, this is all part of it, it's like, oh, was that a, you know, because there are questions, and Nozomi will bring this up later at the end of the chapter, it's like, uh, that looked like kind of a dive. Is this stage? What was going on with Bloodlust? Is this place safe? And he is making it sound like, oh, she was so eager, so bloodlusty to have a chance to fight me, you know, who's the poster girl. It's like, so you know what? We're going to give her the opportunity. Stay tuned, for, you know, fans. And it just hypes the crowd up and it saves the crowd for everyone. Like everyone's like, oh, my God, this is insane. You and I will throw down in the next show. Everyone's cheering for it. It's like, oh, this is great. So anything that looks suspect is completely washed away immediately because Hina picked up on it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Hina is not one of my favorite characters. That type, like Re, is that dialed up to 11, which is not a character trope I like. Hina's similar, just maybe more dialed down to like a 7 or an 8. But I will say the difference between the going past the 10 is that Hina gained a lot of respect from me for this. Like 100%. Her character just shot up. Uh, because as Nozomi says, Hina just didn't do this on a whim or because she wants to fight Rhea or whatever. She is forward thinking. She was like, okay, this is going to look bad. She was thinking like a promoter, like, no, 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 no. I, and we don't see Hina's thought process, but Nozomi has given her a lot of credit and basically says, yeah, no, Hina did that to save this, to save the to save us face, to save the crowd mentality, to save everything. Like this was like her thinking like fast on her feet. Like, yeah, this is the best answer to go forward from here, you know what I mean? Because we want to keep this promotion going. We can't scare the crowd. We need to do this, you know, not in a bad way anyways. We can't scare the crowd in a negative light. We can't do anything negative to affect the crowd. So Hina immediately recognized that and went forward. I got to give props to Hina right there. This was my favorite chapter for Hina as a character up to this point. I know a lot of people liked Hina already. She didn't do much for me. But you got to give the respect here because it really did. It was like, okay, so she's not just the, I'm just really strong and insane. Huh? You know what I mean? Type of character. She does have some depth. She does have some, you know, and that's, I, I like that. I enjoy that factor in her. You know what I mean? She's not a one trick pony anymore, at least as far as I'm concerned. And this definitely solidified it, even if there were hints earlier on in the manga. So yeah, I really like this aspect of it. And so everyone's just going forward like, um, yeah, so we definitely have to do this, you know, but we're we're going to be working on it and blah, blah, blah. This is where Ichika and Nozomi are like, you know, just making herself that Ichika's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Hina, you can't do this shit like that fucking bitch. And that's when Nozomi, as I said, acknowledges Hina bailed us out of this one. Right now, there's, you know, I mean, there's a lot to talk about with that, but I've already basically done that. But Nozomi is actually really pissed at Natsume, who immediately flips over and obviously wasn't hurt and took a fall. So they're both pissed at her. Ichika and Nozomi are basically saying, what the fuck did you just pull? What did you do? You didn't get actually, it wasn't some gimmick and stuff, which we once again, we don't know what the gimmick was. Neither does Natsumi. She doesn't acknowledge it, but it's clear that she didn't really know what was going on either. And that's the readers don't know. Nozomi doesn't know. Nobody seems to know what's going on yet. Probably the doctor, our gender bent Hanafusu does. Probably because noticing how the wounds are inflicted probably has some theory about it. But, like, is it the, the needlepoint thing? You know what I mean? Like, as I said, it's always a hidden weapon. Bullshit. But they get mad at her. It's like, you didn't get hit by shit. You took a dive on purpose. And now this is where I respect Natsumi for that. It's like, what the hell? You know, you couldn't sell a hit to save your life. Like, what kind of a dive was that? Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, doesn't matter. It got the crowd pumped and stuff, right? And Nozomi basically says, yeah, but if you take such an obvious dive, that's going to leave a bad taste in the customer's mouths who lose money. It's also going to look too obvious. We're going to look fixed. It's not going to be good for promotion. So, you know, you could jeopardize this entire organization. This is where, Nozomi, as I said, 
not Nozomi is bringing up a good point like you got to make if you're going to dive make it look better however Natsumi was like I ain't getting paid enough for this shit because you're acting all high and mighty it's your fault that random bitch got in the ring with me in the first place like I might have taken a dive against the real Honoka but after we actually went some rounds and made it look better you sent in you didn't stop a fight with some random bloodthirsty bitch out to try to kill me I and as we saw in the fight, that's how she is, huh? Well, I'm not. I'm not being paid enough for that. Is basically what she's saying. It's like, no, I ain't here. I will take a dive. I am not about to let this bitch, you know, go all fucking killer town on my ass. Like, I ain't here for that. I'm here for a fight, bloody and brutal. I ain't here for the killing aspect of it. So, I ain't being paid enough. So, do I? I respect what Nozomi is saying about it. But uh, Natsumi has the better point, in my opinion, actually. She does have the better point. It's like, yeah, I'm not about to play with that kind of fire. Respect there. It's like, this is underground fighting, but that bitch was out for blood, and I just was not going to entertain it, you know? So that's when Nozomi says, you know, we failed to recognize that. That's fair enough, but the match had already started. We are going to be reevaluating our security going forward, and we're definitely going to try to prevent this in the future. And... She said, and the response is, yeah, yeah, well, whatever. It's like, now, you could have done a much better job of taking the dive, though. It looked like you were trying to make it look fake to me. It's like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about and stuff. And that's when she brings up, you were planning to do this shit the whole time, were you? So this is where I'm sort of like, okay, it's a little 50-50. I agree. Natsumi was right. She's totally right, it, you know, or I'll give her 80%. She is right. It's like, it was your fault that she got through security. I wasn't meant to fight her, and she was after blood, and sorry, I quit. Fuck you, you know? Fair enough, 100% behind that. However, Nozomi suspects and basically confirms you were going to take a dive anyways. You know, just be, you know, you're using this as an excuse, but... You could have play acted a better dive even against this girl and you chose to make it look fake as hell. And you're probably going to do that from the first place anyways, no matter who you fought. And that's where, not to me, this is where she's in a little bit in the wrong. All right, what she, maybe I was. What you going to do about it, bitch? And that's when, knows of me, this is hype. Because remember what we found out about her eye and all that shit. Let's see. We signed you on for three shows. Next time, you're fighting me. Next show, I'm getting in the ring. I'm going to annihilate you. And it's like, okay. Knows me at full strength. Once again, we know her fights have been boring from the beginning of the series. But from what we understand and from what Hina... The whole reason Hina is even here is she is waiting for Nozomi to get stronger to literally give her the best challenge. She thinks, it's like, Nozomi is a serious threat, and now Nozomi is going to go, next show, I'm going to be the one to annihilate you. It's like, okay, Nozomi wants to get back in the ring. We know she's wanted to. Our main character, who was basically had to retire as a fighter, hence the whole point of starting this promotion in the first place, is about to become... Ooh, ooh, I like it. See, I like both characters. I like both of them. I like where this is going. It's a great page to end on. And yeah, chapter 35. Chapter 35 was hitting, ladies and gentlemen. Let me let me tell you that one more time. Chapter 35 was a hitting. It was hitting. It was hitting hard. And it was hitting fast. And yeah, it was just a good time. It was just a good time. Chapter 35. Yep, that was a, definitely an awesome chapter. I liked it. I liked it for a lot of reasons. Because um, we get some different character depth for Hina. Ri is still Ri, she batshit crazy, I hate her ass. Um, but I have some, a lot of respect for Natsumi, uh, and now Nozomi here at the end. Like, that was a good, you know, cat and mouse sort of idea. It's like, hey, you, you know, we're both playing, they're both uh, playing chess a little bit with each other and stuff. I like I like the, you know, circling each other sort of shit. I like it. It works, and I think it's cool. I think it's good narrative. So, anyways, chapter 35 was great. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see all you cats back here next time for the next Star Strike It Rich. Looking forward to it. Hope you guys are too. And we'll see you next time. Have a good one. See ya.